Well, if you watch the video that the BBC has released, uh, it says that they're talking about two universities, University of Lagos, Unilag, and University of Ghana, UG. Now, they've talked about lecturers in the University of Lagos. They've also talked about lecturers from the University of Ghana. At least we've seen two so far. One of them is Professor Ransford Jampo. So we've come up to have a conversation with him, whether he has seen this, whether he has even heard about it in the first place and what he makes about it. Prof, you're welcome to City News. Thank you. You are all over the news, continental news, as having sexually abused students. What do you see about that? I, I'm sure you watched the video. Did you see anything about sexual abuse? I'm asking you. What did you see? I didn't see anything like that. I have not done anything like that. And um, um, let them know that um, if they are doing the bidding of their pay masters, um, I, am, I understand the game more than they do. Um, about two weeks ago, BBC wrote to me that they have evidence that um, I'm doing sex for great. And I said, oh, I don't do that. I'm aware of my university's policies and I know the kinds of things that I do and how I take politicians on. And so I'm particular and careful about some of these things. Um, and so I wouldn't do such a thing. And they said that, well, they have an evidence to show that a lady visited me. And um, so I had some conversations um, with her. And they find out, they find the conversations between me and the lady to be inappropriate. And first of all, I asked, the lady was not my student. Um, we had interacted on phone and WhatsApp for over one month and we had established a certain kind of friendship that made us free to be talking about certain things, you know, in very informal, you know, manner. She wasn't my student. You see, strangely, everything that the lady said to me have been edited and everything that I said is being played. So when they wrote to me, I also wrote to them explaining the circumstances under which we had our conversations and all that. Not that, excuse me to say, I went to sleep with her, I went to fondle her, I went to touch her, I, went, I didn't do anything of that sort. Just our conversations. So I told them that. We had established, you cannot pick our conversations out of context. We had established, the kinds of things that she told me, I referred them, and these conversations were all held in public. There were some of them that were held in my office with my four assistants who were there. They are prepared to testify and to say whatever we discuss, which we all laugh about and all that. Mm. I've referred the BBC to go talk to them. They said they wouldn't. I've told them that if it is truly sexual harassment, then the person involved must be my student. You, they agree that the person was not my student. Mm. And so then where lies in the har harassment where I would be able to have the opportunity or I have the power to change the person's grades and all that. It's, I, she's not even my student. And the other point I'm making is that if I've harassed somebody, why don't you want to use the exist sexual harassment? It's, like, it's criminal. Mm. The university itself has got its own internal rules and committees that handle these things. So if BBC means well and they, are not be, they haven't been paid, I'm aware. I mean, I, I know I've received several messages, text messages, WhatsApp informations about politicians wanting to kill me, politicians wanting to bring me down and doing all manner of things just to be able to call me into submission. And I am reliably informed that somebody has paid them to be doing this. Otherwise, I'm... Somebody paid the deal. Yeah, I'm telling you. Otherwise... Somebody who? I don't know, but I'm sure somebody must, must have done that. Otherwise, what is the sense in this? When I'm referring you to a, um, this, um, the due processes, if I've really done um, something like this, why wouldn't you encourage the student to report to the university? Yes. So that, hold on, so that the university invites me, I am here, the student is here, and then we talk about the matter, the student proofs that I have done X, Y, Z. And then I explain myself. You are not willing to do that. Mm. You are not willing to report the matter to the police. Mm. But you are willing to encourage students of the university that should anything happen on campus, they should come to BBC rather to re report mm. and not to ex use the institutions that have been established locally. Mm. And yet you keep saying that we have weak institutions. If we have weak institutions, how do we strengthen them if we don't allow them to work? Very well. Prof, this person that has been caught in the video with you, what is your relationship? How did you come to know them? The lady. Since, since she's not your student. Well, I, in my usual, I'm always busy. I don't have time for anything. I got to my office around April. I was in a rush. Then my assistant, she's there. You can reach her. My assistant, Harriet, told me that, Prof, I am pleading with you. This lady has been to your office for about 20 times. Anytime she comes... You don't. Um, you are not available. So I've asked her to wait for you under the trees, and I knew that you would be coming around this time. So I'm pleading with you, meet her. I said, okay. 
bring her in. So she came to the office and then we had a conversation. What, what was the conversation? She started by saying, I admire you, you are confident, you are articulate, I like the kinds of things you do um, to keep politicians on their toes. I said, my sister, what brought you here because I'm in a hurry? And she said, actually, she wanted me to be her mentor. I said, no problem. And she told me that she was doing a paper that she feels I can be able to um, advise her with respect to how she should go. What was the paper about? You know, I'd spoken vehemently against the draft public universities bill. Mm -hmm. So she came to tell me that she was writing a paper on academic freedom. And she feels that my comment on the draft public university bill could be helpful. And so we should have that kind of conversation, you know, about how she can um, go about uh, writing um, the paper. And we sat down, I advised her, and that was the beginning of our conversation. Subsequently, she went, she sent me messages with two different phones. One, she said, don't keep this one, it's for my friend. The other one, yeah, we can keep the I made sure, I am cautious, and so I made sure that in my WhatsApp conversations, I didn't say anything incriminate, incriminatory, but the point is... You have these WhatsApp threads to show if, if it need be? Well, the I... WhatsApp chats with her? Unfortunately, you know, I used um, a phone that had a very low memory, and I explained this thing to the BBC, a very low memory, and so... Every time I have conversations, if I'm going to sleep, I delete all my messages. Okay. And so I don't, I don't have even the one, the message, I, conversation I had with her, regular, or with her on a regular, I don't have the one I had with, you know, the other line that she asked me to receive, I don't even have. But the point I'm making is that, so in the course of our conversation, she'll wake up every morning and send you a message. Um, greet you, wish you a lovely day, and blah, blah, blah. So because of that, we had established a certain friendship over a period of one month. Did it become an amorous relationship over a period of one month? Well, in the course of our conversation, I'm a man. The kinds of things that she was saying, um, I admire you, I want you to be my friend, and blah, blah, blah. I also told her, well, um, I also want you to be my friend, and we, we can have a relationship. I told I mean, I, I must be honest with you, but I said all these things with the knowledge that she isn't my student, and she's not somebody whose academic future or fortunes I can influence. And so, whatever conversation, I, at the point I said, you are going to be my third wife. And I said this, and my friends, uh, my assistants in the office were all there. They said, we are jealous today. You said, this is my first wife. This is my second one. Now you, you've brought in a wife. In that kind of jovial atmosphere and, you know, really a kind of relationship. So, did, did she say anything also on similar lines? Did she say to you that she would want to marry you, for instance? No, uh, no, 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 no. We, we, uh, uh, I mean, to be fair and to be honest, she didn't say anything like that. But the point is, we're having a conversation and she never objected to anything that I said. Mm -hmm. Everything that I said, uh, oh, she would laugh about it and say, oh, you too. I mean, those kind, those kinds of things. And we, we were just having, the first time that she, said something that I could describe as amorous was the first day she entered my office. Okay. okay. And subsequently, she her seductive dressing that I commented on and my assistants she were dressing all seductive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, such that you should be able to see and, and say something about. And I mean, the, all these things went on. And there were so, people so did you, there. So you tried to date her? Did you try to date her? No, we didn't. The first time I met her out of my office was when I was having something to do at the mall. She said you and were asking to come to her house and no, she convinced you no, this to is meet at the no, mall instead. No, no, this is what happened. I told her that I was going to meet some people at the mall. And listen, if you ask my student, you can go around and ask. You have been my student. The first day she came to my office, she was neatly dressed with the high heels and all that. And you know I love high heels. So the moment I saw I said, look, this is the way I expect people going to look for information to dress mm. so that you can get the information you have. So the next day she came to, the, um, to my office. She was very sharply dressed, well, seductive, but down, um, she was just wearing some flute. What do you mean by seductive? Well, she had, she had popped up her boobs and, <laughs> and my assistants were there. They, could, they themselves had to complain. And then well, that wasn't even what I was going to talk about. What I was going to talk about, oh, but last time you were so neatly dressed with your shoes and all that, but how come um, um, today, today you've dressed? I said, you know, I don't have um, money to buy wedge. Wedge is it's a kind of shoe, but that one is more comfortable. I don't have that. I said, oh, don't worry. Now that you become my wife, I will buy you some. Okay. And she said, okay. So the next time I was going to meet some colleagues, you know, at the mall, mm -hmm. I called her that, look, I am home, but I'm going to the mall. 
Um, I know we'll be meeting on Monday, but if you wouldn't mind, you can pass by. We can we can go together so that maybe after my meeting or before my meeting, we can have some conversations and all that. So show me where you are so that I can come there to pick you. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Okay. That's that's what I, uh, she meant by I wanted to go to her house. So okay. show me where you are so that I can come there to pick you. She said, okay, she's going to show me. I should give her some time. Then in about one hour to two hours time, she told me that she's already at the mall. So I should go. I said, okay, no problem. So I could imagine that, well, if she's been at the mall all this, well, then maybe she's been waiting there for, for long. So let me go. So I drove there. The moment I go there, she's told me that, hey, you promised me you're going to buy me a shoe. And so where is it? I said, let's go to Bata. We went to Bata. I was going to buy her one. She picked two shoes and I paid for it. After picking the two shoes, we went to sit down and I ordered a, a meal. I didn't even buy some. She got the food and then just before she could eat the food, she said she had a call. There's an emergency. She had to go home. And I said, okay, let them pack your food for you. They packed the food. She was about going. I said, hey, my friend, can't you, you are going, can't we hug? And he said, oh, I'm in an emergency, so I have to go. I said, okay, go. Um, let's meet another time. Two hours after her departure, I called her. He said there was an emergency. So what is the state of affairs? So I'm sorry for not calling to, to update you, but everything is well. Um, full animal. This is all I know about the story. The next time I heard was BBC writing to me that my conversation with her was inappropriate. And I'm saying, if that conversation was inappropriate, how does it amount to me sleeping with her and changing her grades? In the video, you are seen saying that I'll kiss you, I'll marry you. You admit you did those, you said those things. We had had a certain informal relationships, okay, conversation. Mm -hmm. And this is what, obviously they have edited so, uh, so much of the contents. We, she was, she was showing um, some, there was something on her phone, okay, there was something on her phone that I chanced on it, I mean, she was, and I, was, uh, is it, I don't know whether it's a movie, but somebody was, uh, it's like a movie, and so I saw something like that, I said, have you, have you ever been kissed violently before? And he said, oh, no, 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 I said, okay. Then she was like, behaving like she was shy, I said, look, uh, be free and be open, because we are friends, if you don't take care, I'll kiss you violently so that you're, your shyness <laughs> will go away. And then we all laughed about it, mm. and that is all. Do you regret your relationship with her now that you know that she's not really who she claimed she was when she first met you? No, I knew she wasn't my student, but I didn't know that she was sent to trap me or to set me up. Now okay. that you have this information. Now that, uh, yes, I mean, it's, it's regrettable, and unfortunately for me, I, I pray it doesn't happen, but it's going to um, have a telling impact in the way I relate with everybody, including my students. Because there are people who come to you genuinely looking for information, looking for assistance. And if you don't take care, then you are going to say, everybody who comes to you says, please go away. Because she came as if she was genuine, she needed information. And we had established, I don't, the kind of relationship that I had with her, I don't have that relationship Is it with not your character to, you know, offer grades for sex in this school? I have never done that and I will never do that. That is me, Rans, for example. I have never done that. I will never do that. Go and ask my level 400 students who just finished and they are just writing, um, 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 they are just doing their um, 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 national service. Ask them. Ask him. He was my student. People fail. They come to you. They cry. I cry too. I tell them that it is better you go and rewrite. We have integrity and we know what we are doing for Mother Ghana. So we will not allow some of these things to just come and um, um, set us back and all that. So... I am committed to doing what I, I know how to do best and tell the politicians who are behind this that these things haven't worried me at Why all. Why do you keep saying politicians? Do you have a political ambition? No, no, Salt no. one for instance? No, 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 no. I don't. I mean, I can't do partisan politics. I want to play my role as, yeah. as, as, as a referee. But I'm saying that tell those behind, uh, behind this, uh, those who are Ghanaians and those who are not Ghanaians behind. I don't know if you read the subject, the letters that, that have, been, um, have been sent to me and then the ones that I responded to. I mean, they were saying that they, they want to do this because they said I'm influential and powerful. I'm not sure I'm that influential and powerful. I do what I can do just for the sake of Mother Ghana. Mm -hmm. I don't have that influence they talk about. I'm not powerful. And if I run afoul the, of, of the rules of my university, the university would deal with me. I've taught for 14 years. Not a single report, formal complaint of sexual harassment or sex for greed has been launched against me on my file. So now that this documentary has been broadcast to the whole continent, in fact, to the whole world, and your, your video is in there, 
you have spoken in there and the allegation is that you have been engaged in sex for grades. What are you going to do to clear your image? I keep, if you think I keep, you have I keep an image telling you, I keep telling you that or asking you to also make your own take on it. You've also seen the video. Have you seen anything called sex for grade? How can you engage in sex, so-called sex for grade relationship with somebody who is not a student in the first place? Well, this is a clear case of defamation. And um, initially, in my response to the BBC, I told them that I will leave the matter to God and to their conscience. I will not take them on because I know. And when they were doing they made me know. I know that they have all the resources under the sun to be able to pay for any defamatory claim, you know, uh, any, damage, any damages I may demand. They have all the money. But I also know that no amount of monetary compensation will be able to clear the damage that may have been caused. So that was my initial position, that I'm not going to even bother um, um, them, so long as I know that I have not, I've not done what they are claiming I've done. And their own video, uh, video evidence does not um, show that. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave the matter to the conscience of, um, of, of themselves and then also to Ghanaians. But my lawyers insist that we must teach them a lesson. So tomorrow morning, they will see our defamatory suit against them. We will sue them. You, you sue the BBC? Yes, you will sue them. Will yeah. you sue the lady as well? Do you know her? Do you have an I address? I, I think that the lady was just hired and paid to come and do what she did. And she said she's called Ab Abigail Lamte. And I have every b um, grounds to believe that it's maybe a pseudonym. And we don't know where to find her. Ever since, I mean, she went off her phone and you can't reach her. So we would sue the BBC. When was the last time you had an, an encounter or communication with her? The last time I had an encounter was the last time we were departed from the mall. So you hadn't seen her since? No. Then? You haven't made a first No, 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 no. I, when she got to the house, I called to find out whether she's gotten um, to, um, to the house. And, um, and she said she's sorry for not getting in touch with me. She was actually in need of my support or my assistant to help her write whatever she wanted to write. So I took the position that, I mean, you need me, so I don't have to be calling you. You've never slept with her? I can't do that. I've never done that. you never attempted to sleep with her? You saw the video. I have not done that. I wouldn't ever do that. I'm a gentleman.